I'm Wendy Collier, and this is Soul Fuel, a show where we talk about the power of doing exactly what you were placed on this earth to do. Really do. Come alive and live free from the inside out. Create a business and life you love. Plug into your power, think differently, become an unstoppable force, and uncover what is really holding you back. Get clear, courageous, and confident. Don't waste one more day, sister. Welcome to another episode of Soul Fuel. Hello, hello. How you doing out there? Hope you are well. This is episode number 134, and today we're talking about self-love. Kind of a dirty word in some circles. I recently realized I've only done one podcast on this topic, and it was some time ago, and I think that's a shame because it's so important to success in business and in life for that matter. So we really do need to talk about it more. And that first episode was called Self-Love, Do You Really Need It? What do you think? I definitely recommend you listen to it if you haven't already because it sets the foundation for a new slash different way of looking at self-love that can really open things up for you. I assume because you found this topic interesting and the subject of this episode appealed to you that you suspect you might need a little more self-love. So we're going to look at how this can look like in action day to day. And my invitation is simply to lean into the perspective that your life and business are a direct reflection of the degree of self-love you have. And to just notice what comes up for you just hearing me say that. I'm going to say it one more time. Your life and your business are a direct reflection of the degree of self-love you have. So what do you feel in your body when I say that? Like, what questions come up? Do you have any negative thoughts? Like, you know, I've been taught self-love is selfish or it's greedy or it's wrong or it's even sinful. And how is it that we can sometimes make love a bad thing when it's pointed toward us, but not when it's pointed toward others? So if you begin to see patterns in your life that lead to you feeling depleted, maybe resentful, bitter, unhappy, exhausted, overwhelmed. You can be sure that can be traced directly back to how much you love yourself or how much you don't. You might find yourself kind of blaming other people for things, um, you know, circumstances. You might feel like a lot is out of your control. Those are signals to turn inward because we are the common denominator in all the situations we have in our lives. And the easy path is to say that it's outside our control. You know, it's someone else's fault. It's for this reason or that reason. Our mind will come up with excuses and judgments on ourselves and others about it. But when we take radical responsibility, that's when we really find freedom and we find that we have a greater, much greater ability to affect and impact everything in our life in a much more positive way. So of course, with everything, there's a spectrum. You know, you might find yourself on one end of this where you really struggle with caring for yourself, loving yourself, even liking yourself, all the way to people who just have a really strong sense of self-love And also, we're not talking about the narcissistic kind that is unhealthy. (laughs) We're talking about normal amounts of self-love. So the important part is just to begin to identify exactly where you are so you can course correct and, and point yourself in a better direction. In that first episode I did, I shared my personal experience with this whole concept And I'll let you listen to that to get the full scoop. But for now, just a snippet, uh, I shared that I was taught that self-love was bad, that it was selfish, that it was even a sin. I was taught to self-neglect, to not think about my needs or seek to have them met. I was taught to disconnect from my own intuition and desires and only think of others what they needed, how I could serve them. 
at the exclusion of, you know, thinking about what might be good or best for me in those situations. So not surprisingly, as a result, I was plagued with more situations than I can count that were unhealthy, dysfunctional, and abusive in some cases. And I say that not as a victim, but instead coming from an aware state now where I see the connection between between my degree of self-love and care or love for myself and these things, these circumstances I found myself in. And I know that many of you were taught the same, women especially. And the fact is, it just doesn't work in the end. It harms, I think, not only, of course, yourself, but it can cause harm to others in various ways that it can show up when you really are going into self-neglect, self-deprivation. And this can show up in small ways or big ways and everything in between. And I like to just bring some awareness to the smaller everyday things because these are much easier to adjust than the bigger ones. Yet, you know, it still create a very positive impact when you follow the clues, you know, that they offer you. So how do you know if you need more self-love? I guess I would ask, you know, how often do you allow yourself to feel good on a day-to-day basis? How often are you allowing yourself to suffer? whether that's your internal dialogue or through the choices you're making in your life, the decisions, the current state, you know, of your relationships, your job and career or your business, where, where are you at with your level of suffering in your life? You know, you probably already have heard my corporate story. (laughs) And when I look back at all those years, it started out that I, you know, was really excited about this, the new role I had or new job out, out of college. And I had a lot of fervor, you know, and a lot of drive to do my very best. And I had a lot of fun those first few years, but it did shift and definitely change where I ended up feeling very unfulfilled and extremely stressed that was showing up physically, emotionally, and in so many ways. And When I look back in hindsight, I can see that as my self-esteem grew, my tolerance for my level of suffering decreased. And that's a good thing. (laughs) You know, we are very, very, very adaptable as human beings. And that's a positive, wonderful quality we needed to survive. And at the same time, we can find ourselves adjusting just a little too much in circumstances that we shouldn't really adapt to uh, that can be detrimental to us. And I can see clearly now that as I grew in my care about how I felt, it became less and less acceptable that I was tolerating putting myself, and it was my, my responsibility, my fault, so to speak, putting myself in jobs and in positions that were not fueling me. They were draining me (laughs) and I dreaded doing it. That is the opposite of self-love. If you're allowing yourself to stay in a job that is doing that to you, you have to ask yourself how much you're really caring for yourself. And same with a relationship. And some things can be improved, obviously. And that's another conversation to have with yourself is can, is there enough here, enough positive here that I can work with in order to make this better and healthier for me? And if not, you, you can choose to walk away and find something that is. So on a really kind of funny, small level, I have a funny example of this, um, just a daily thing, because I, it has come up a few times in my mind to share this as a really funny way that your ability or your willingness to care for yourself can show up. So at home, I have this two-way switch on my front door. It's a light switch, obviously. So I can turn the light off and on from the bottom or the top of the stairs. And then it automatically goes off when I'm gone. And almost every time I approach my house at night, I pause for just a second. And I have this inner dialogue about turning the light on to climb the stairs or whether I can get by without it. And this is part laziness because the switch is behind a tree. It's not the easiest thing to reach. Combined with the story I have about saving electricity, but I mean, really, how much electricity am I saving? 
for those few seconds it takes me to climb the stairs? And what about, you know, the potential for me falling down the stairs, <laughs> hurting myself? The bigger point is this. Would I turn the light on for someone I care about? Or even a complete stranger? Yes, absolutely. And I do. I don't want them to trip. I want it to be easy for them to see the stairs. So why not give this to myself? And this is why I say yes to turning it on every single time. But it is, I find it funny slash surprising that I do have that moment where I pause for just a few seconds or millisecond probably um, in stopping myself from turning it on. So this is just a tiny act of self-love that sends a message to me and the universe that I care about myself because I would definitely turn it on for someone else. I know this may sound ridiculous, <laughs> but it's these little things that send a message to our subconscious about what we are worth. And when you take something like that, combined with the countless other ways this is showing up for you, it adds up. And of course, at the same time, it's showing up in big things, like what we just talked about, staying in in a job that's draining you, or staying in an unhealthy relationship, or allowing yourself not to be at your best physically in terms of your health, or even bringing a lot of drama and stress into your business unnecessarily. It's kind of a form of self-abuse, right? And the cost to that can add up big time, big time. So I want you to think about someone you love so much, you would do almost anything for them. This is a person you adore. Quite likely, it's a child or your partner or could be your mom or your dad. Consider what you do for them or what you would do for them like the ins and outs, the details, the practical ways that you express your love for this person. How does it make you feel to be loving towards someone else? And then how do you see it making the other person feel when they're receiving it? What you want to tune into here is the energy of love, the impact of love on you as the giver, on the other as the receiver or you as the receiver, love is an expansive energy. It opens people. It opens energy. It attracts and generates more love, more openness, more magnetism. And that draws in very good things for everyone involved. And here's the deal. This is not only limited to when you're giving it to someone else. It's love, period. And the impact and power of that, whether that is toward yourself or other people, is big. It doesn't just happen when it's directed toward someone else. In other words, when you step into loving yourself, you are also opening up to all the good things and all the same difference you notice when you're loving someone else unconditionally, you are allowing for that to come into your world, come into your space and your environment. And that has a ripple effect toward, with others, of course, right? Because now you're creating an environment of love. So how does this relate to business? <laughs> well, how could it not? How could it not? It shows up in how much you are charging for your services Definitely. And I am a believer. I do help my clients with pricing. We work on this in Client Attraction Academy as well as in my private coaching work. I am not one of those coaches who says you should overprice yourself or go for high ticket programs and services when you're just beginning. You know, I teach marketing and sales with integrity, high levels of integrity. And there is a way to assess, to determine where you are the stage of business you're in, as well as your personal and professional development, and how that correlates to the value of your services, and then weighing that with the market demands and market expectations, uh, consumer purchasing behaviors, all kinds of things come into play with that. But what I do find is more often than not, women I work with are undervaluing their services. I know that's not all of you, but for those of you who know who I'm talking about... (laughs) you know who you are. (laughs) This is something to look at. And a good portion of my work is helping women to see the value 
and also to create more value. So developing the skills necessary to add more value to your clients and customers, developing the knowledge about marketing and sales to attract the right clients for your services, to develop your services and programs and offerings as you know, to the level that is high value that warrants the price point. And this, but when you're, you know, it also goes back to your sense of self-worth, your sense of value in yourself. And that is a hundred percent connected to self-love. So you might also see this in how often you put yourself out there. How visible are you in the world with what you do, with promoting your services and offers? How willing are you to be judged and criticized, which is unavoidable, by the way. So for, for those with a healthy sense of self-love, putting yourself out there isn't as scary at all because you don't worry nearly as much about being judged and criticized. Because you know that you are operating from a place of integrity and honesty and transparency and all that you do, you feel confident about who you are, what you have to offer, the value you have to add, and what others think becomes less and less important. And you are in that inner dialogue, in that self-talk, you are reminding yourself of those things. And you can see if you don't have that strong, confident inner dialogue that's authentic, how that might affect and impact your ability to get out there and be more visible and to be okay with the judgments and criticisms that inevitably come your way. (laughs) Yes. Uh, This can also show up in how you treat yourself when something doesn't go as planned in your business. So do you beat yourself up? Do you make yourself, you call yourself names, you make yourself really wrong about it, or do you simply look at it as a learning experience that you are going to reflect on and learn from and move forward accordingly. Take a good look at that. Take a good look at when things don't go as planned. How are you treating yourself? That's a brilliant indicator of how much you're loving yourself. And if you imagine a child or your partner or someone you love having a plan not go exactly as they wished, what you would say to them in that moment when they're downtrodden and they're beating themselves, I should have done this, I should have done that. What would you say to them? And you want to give that to yourself as you would give it to someone you love. You might also see this in terms of your willingness to to launch, to make offers. How fast are you or how quick are you to do that? Are you holding yourself back constantly on putting things out there. That's because there's a fear, of course, of rejection. And the fear of rejection doesn't need to be a fear unless you are fear, unless you are first rejecting yourself. And that's always where it begins. So if you are rejecting yourself, then of course, you know, the, the rejection or perceived rejection of others is going to trigger you because it's activating something already within you. But if you don't have, and if you aren't in a state of rejecting yourself consistently, there's nothing to be activated if that does happen. And it's inevitable. You know, more people will say no to your offers and your services than yes, right? Just statistically speaking, less people are going to buy from you than are the people who will buy from you, right? So you have 80% people who won't, 20% will kind of a deal. That is not an exact number, but you get what I'm saying. So, of course, it also shows up in how you're taking care of yourself as well. Financially, emotionally, mentally, physically, what does that look like in your life day to day in terms of how you are caring, nurturing, and loving yourself? And I do want to just take a moment to talk about your relationship with money here because, oh my goodness, it's it's really an area of opportunity for almost everyone I talk to, and we all have our different you know, levels here to, of opportunity, all of us can use more, he- a healthier relationship with money, I think, because there's always that next level to reach in abundance and an overflow, right? Do you want someone you love to have more than enough money? Do you want them to live comfortably, get have the things that they need and the things they want? How about you? Are you allowing yourself to live in scarcity and fear and lack around money and worrying all the time? Are you stuck 
in a pattern that says you have no choice, you have no options, I have to do this before that, this is the reason this is happening and there's nothing I can do about it, are you feeling like you don't have those options? So would you help someone you love get their money on track if they were struggling? Would you step in and maybe assist in giving ideas and problem solve it in a very positive way? How about doing that for yourself? (laughs) Yeah? Alongside this is the need for support, the need for you to surround yourself with the support you need in order to grow your business. And you might find that you are neglecting yourself in respect, some respect around this when it comes to getting the coaching and the mentorship you need to grow and to thrive, giving yourself that. A lot of women, you know, you so generous with their hearts and in their and with their money with other people, but not with themselves. And something I really want us to embrace is this idea that it is far better to come from overflow than depletion. I think we can all agree <laughs> to that, right? So when you're filling your cup, you're taking care of yourself, you're loving yourself, you are making sure your needs are met, making sure your desires are heard and fulfilling those as much and as often as you can, you are overflowing and that spills out to others. So when you can create a thriving business that has consistent, stable revenue, you are able to give more to the causes that you're crazy about. You're able to help other people. You're able to obviously make an impact in your clients and customers' lives in a very positive way. You're able to give more to them And you're not coming from struggle. You're not coming from lack and wanting. It helps everyone. Abundance helps everyone. So in order to create that abundance, if you haven't already, at least to the level you desire, that requires being mentored and coached along the way to reach that point. And of course, sometimes it's a stretch initially to make those investments. But they always, when you put the work in, you show up for yourself, you make that decision right, it can pay off big time, big time. So something to look at is, are you allowing yourself to get the support you need to grow your business? Yes. So I think you probably get the idea overall because you can apply this to everything else. You can apply this to your emotions, your mind, your body. Are you taking care of yourself physically? Are you loving yourself emotionally? Are you saying positive thoughts in your head throughout the day? Are you reassuring yourself or are you allowing yourself to self-abuse in a way? I know that's a strong word. And there's mild self-abuse and there's severe self-abuse. And everything in the middle. Just something to look at. So your homework today is to pick three specific ways you are going to love yourself better moving forward. And I want you to choose something that is really uncomfortable for you, something that feels decadent or even a little scary in a good way, something you might do for someone else that you're going to now choose to do for yourself. And then when you do it, will you please take a picture and tag me on Instagram? That's assuming it's a physical thing that's you're able to take a picture of, (laughs) Uh, you can tag me on Instagram at Wendy Collier Worldwide. You can share it in your stories and then tag me and then I will reshare and celebrate with you. And you could use the hashtag self-care. I really would love for us to do this together because it will create a cascade of of abundance and flow for you and for others that you share this with. So I can't wait to see what you do. Again, just take a picture, tag me on Instagram at Wendy Collier Worldwide, all one word with the hashtag self-care. And as a final reminder, you also have the other podcast on this topic, um, self-love, do you really need it to listen to? That would be a great follow-up to this if you haven't heard it already. And I look forward to hearing how you're going to be caring for yourself more and what that's gonna look like in a very practical way for you. Thank you so much for listening today, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. 
Thanks for listening. Did you like this episode of Soul Fuel? Cruise over to iTunes now and rate and review the show. It's the number one way people find it. Will you also please share the show with a friend? Thank you for giving back. I appreciate it. To become a Soul Fuel insider and receive additional awesome resources and personal insights not shared on this podcast, cruise on over and grab your free Soul Fuel Starter Bundle at soulfuelstarter.com. This bundle will help you uncover which passions and talents you have right now that are best for you to monetize. You will get clear about what makes you really tick. You'll boost your confidence and start tapping into your Soul Fuel. This bundle is valued at $700, but is my gift to you at soulfuelstarter.com. So go over right now and grab it. Remember, you have a soul signature no one else in the history of the world will ever have. It is your soul fuel. Now go live it. See you in the next episode.